I can hear it in my head right now, 40 years later. All of a sudden, you heard this noise. Pop! Pop! The noise was just incredible, and the building shook. It sounded like a big tree limb cracking. I just remember hearing it crack. Concrete and steel doesn't, doesn't break quietly. The second floor walkway begins to sag, and then it begins to split. Looking at each other, and that's all I remember. From the very top, here it came. And they land on top of hundreds of people. And then, black. In a few seconds right after that was perhaps the most odd portion of the whole event. Oh, total silence and eerie. You didn't hear a scream. You didn't hear a thing for three, four, maybe even five seconds. And then the chaos started. NBC9 photojournalist Dave Forstate started rolling and running. There's a lot of adrenaline that was going through my body at that time. Two skywalks had collapsed onto the lobby of Kansas City's Hyatt Regency Hotel. Busboys and dancers donning numbers for a swing dance contest spun into action to help. Everybody, please Concrete, steel, and glass, now a 72-ton tomb. <clears throat> In it. immediately smell like death. I don't know how else to put it. Just, you knew. There'd be, there was an odor. Musician Rich Coble was just feet from the wreckage that now encased dozens of people like Mark Williams. I knew there were people next to me that were killed instantly. And I don't want to go into how I knew that, but I knew. The minute it came down and hit us, I knew there were people crushed. My first thought is, where's a phone? Mahoney found one in the hotel and, uh, restaurant. This uh, operator from the Hyatt switchboard comes on, and I don't know where she was located in the hotel, but I know where she wasn't. She wasn't anywhere close to what had just happened in the lobby, and she greets me with a good evening. Hyatt Hotels, may I help you? As Mahoney tried to reach the KMBC 9 newsroom, emergency help was already on the way. Come to the Hyatt Regency immediately. Three sky bridges fell in. Three what? Sky bridges holding people from the third floor fell and crashed. Okay. Police officer Vince Ortega was the first responder on the scene. The dispatcher kept updating me almost by minute by minute. Say now there's multiple entities. Officer Ortega arrived moments later. One lady just was on my arm, grabbed me in, grabbed me and she said, please help. So I started following her in, opened the door, and as soon as I opened up the door, I saw just people screaming, moaning, and groaning, and hurt. Linda Skurlock, Teresa Cuevas, and Sally Firestone, who had been on the second floor, were now sandwiched between skywalks. And buried in the deepest section of rubble was 11-year-old Dalton Grant and his mom. I was turned sideways. One cheek was on the ground, and the skywalk had stopped an inch above my cheek, so about as wide as my skull. And so I think my pelvis had broken, and so my knees came up by my ears as I was face down, like a frog kind of shape. And my mother was, I don't know if she was up on a step higher than me, but if I could reach forward and touch her. With bare hands, survivors were digging through the debris in a frantic effort to save lives. You know, at the beginning, when I was shooting the party, everybody's happy to see me. In the middle of the chaos, there were people that just thought, you know, these people shouldn't have been there. <laughs> I think it was after the one woman that you saw who was hysterical. Some guy just started coming at, up at me and screaming. Without warning, he started to throw punches. But fortunately, our general manager, Kent Repluggle, was nearby 
and he ran over and got the guy off of me. Moments earlier, KMBC's general manager had also witnessed the collapse. It just started to buckle, and as I saw it, it just started to get noise, like it buckled, and then it, uh, and then it just fell down to the ground. Those who could were escaping the Hyatt. Former teacher Annette Leiben, who had stepped off the skywalks right before the collapse, leading the way. I went immediately into evacuation. She passed the band, the musicians in and out of the building, helping carry the injured to safety. It was, it was grim. The balcony collapsed and maybe 50 to 100 people. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and we need something that can lift several tons. Fire department, people are trapped underneath the balcony. Following a 12-hour shift at Baptist Memorial Hospital, Dr. Joe Wackerly was working out. And then I came back down and was obviously tired and wet and got a phone call saying something happened at the Hyatt. <laughs> My name is Joseph F. Wackerly. The city's EMS director was unavailable. Wackerly had done the job for the last decade and got the call instead. And that's how it started. I'll never forget that. Word of the disaster was spreading quickly. Recent high school graduate Brent Wright had spent the night working on a loading dock at Oak Park Mall in nearby Overland Park. I was working that night. I had the radio on and I heard something had happened at the Hyatt Hotel. And, you know, I didn't know if anybody I knew was there. He was miles from the chaos, but tragedy was already closer than he knew. I remember finally, finally being able to, to leave and listen to the, the, the local radio station reporting on something that happened and, you know, eight confirmed deaths. And I'm just screaming at the radio going, no, no, there's dozens. Dave, you were inside filming with Mike Mahoney. What did you see happen? Well, Mike and I were up across on the second uh, floor near the restaurant, and we were sitting up for interviews, and all of a sudden, we just saw the catwalk collapse in the middle, and everything just came down in one big swoop. I realized immediately that this is an enormous story. I also realized that my feature days at Channel 9 are over. I'm going to be covering a terrible mass casualty event. That very night, ABC News Nightline and Ted Koppel turned to the only reporter in the room. And it came down in the middle, Ted, and people began to slide off. They began to jump out. What the world didn't yet realize for the survivors trapped inside The terror was just beginning. The water started to rise on the floors, and I'm got my trying to get my head up, and I'm starting to breathe water in. 